All right, great. Uh, so I'm going to bring you on a journey, an underwater journey in the, on the Western Australian coast. So I am studying Sunbird Reef um, on the West Coast. So I am part of the uh, university. Um, so I'm doing a PhD at the UWA, uh, University of Western Australia. And so I would like to start my um, story by describing uh, what is on this picture there. So I've been taking this picture in Perth uh, last summer, and you can see the two main organisms that I'm going to talk about during my talk. So you can see at the background um, those uh, brown kelp, so Exonia radiata, which are um, seaweed that are uh, dominating uh, Western Australian temperate reef. So they create a very complex habitat where fish and other type of um, organisms, just like crustacean and other invertebrates, uh, rely on. Uh, as an habitat or uh, resources um, uh, yeah, where they can find food or shelters. And then you can see um, at the front, uh, those huge coral colonies. Um, so that's my two main actor actually of my story there. So to begin with, uh, we have seen huge changes in, um, in our ecosystem here in Western Australia. So the temperate reef uh, goes as far north as Kabari, which is seven hours north of Perth, and goes all the way uh, down to uh, the, uh, New South Wales, actually. So that's a huge ecosystem, continuous ecosystem. But lately, we have seen dramatic changes, especially at the warmer edge. So for example, in Kabari, after the marine heat wave in 2011, um, most of our kelp have completely gone now. And so they are replaced by other type of um, ecosystems such as uh, tropical seaweed that have a very different function uh, than the kelp forest. And uh, where I'm going to spend a bit more time is like some of our dive sites in Pogregory, which is like only 40 minutes south of Calvary. Uh, we have seen huge changes in the ecosystem where we have turf state. So another panelist was talking about turf state in uh, the East Coast. So we have the kind of same thing here in Western Australia, but also some dive sites are actually dominated by those huge corals now. And we don't know much about those corals. We don't know um, how much do they grow, uh, if they grow as fast as tropical coral, for example, if they have a different um, growth rate according to seasons. So that's something I'm trying to um, study for my PhD. And so this is very important because the coral will completely shape the ecosystem. So they will um, shape the complexity of the rocky reef. Um, it's going to create more sediment and another type of habitat for uh, associated species. So for the last year, I've been going in the field. Um, so I've been collecting some corals. So I have different species that have uh, glued on ties, as you can see. And then I have this frame underwater where I just leave the corals. Um, they settle there and they just slowly calcify, slowly acc accumulating calcium carbonate. And then after each season, I am able to weigh them, assess the growth and how much, yeah, how much they accumulated this calcium carbonate. So I've been doing this in Paul Gregory, but I've been also having this project in Perth um, because we still have a coral community, but it's very different than the one that we have in Paul Gregory, but it's still to have an idea of how much uh, those coral are going to um, calcify over the seasons. Um, and so thanks to the Australian Wildlife um, Society, I've been able to go a bit more in the field and I will be able to uh, keep going on this project. So now I want to go at different location. As you can see on the right of my screen, I have like different location where I want to assess uh, the coral community and how, how much they shape actually the rocky reef. The rocky reef. Uh, so it's a method that they use in uh, tropical reef where they can assess the rugosity of um, the reef. Uh, and um, measure how, how much um, the, yeah, the complexity of the reef is. So that's what I'm going to do um, for the next season. Summer season is coming here. So that's going to be a lot of field work for me. And so I'm very excited about it. And um, yeah, I hope I will have good results that I can talk through later on. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for me. So I'm just going to uh, say thank you for all the funding and for uh, to the Australian Wildlife Society as well. And a huge thanks for the uh, Wenber Lab where I'm, I'm, I'm part of. So 
big thanks to like all the people that can help me on the field because I'm not the only one. I cannot dive by myself, so I need a lot of help, a uh, lot of divers as well with me. So that has been very, very nice the last season. So hopefully the next season will be as good. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>